Hi, my name is Michelle Gellis. I'm an acupuncture physician specializing in facial and cosmetic acupuncture classes. And today I am going to speak to you. I'm doing part one of a lecture on facial motor points. Can you go to the first slide, please? So the, the title of this talk is facial motor point use for cosmetic applications. And um, in part two, I'm going to talk about a uh, little bit about facial motor points for neuromuscular facial conditions. Here is uh, some of my publications from the Journal of Chinese Medicine. And I'll put links up at the end to my social where you can actually um, use some of these publications. And these are all the classes I teach. Today, the motor point lecture will focus on uh, treating neuromuscular facial conditions and some of my advanced techniques. Motor points have been used for a very long time, not just by acupuncturists. They've also been used um, by medical doctors, and they date way back to the late 1800s. And more recently, um, some acupuncturists and other physicians have uh, been using facial motor points for neuromuscular facial concerns. So what is a motor point? Well, when a muscle is either in spasm or in a flaccid state, it is not firing properly. And if you take an acupuncture needle and insert it properly into the muscle's motor point, it will cause the muscle to jump and reset it into normal function. So this is kind of what a uh, motor nerve looks like here. So this would be a sensory nerve going out to the skin. And here's a motor nerve uh, going to the muscle. But in uh, with our face, the muscle is actually connected to the skin. So when you reset the muscle, it can help to enhance the appearance of the skin. Now, motor points are not trigger points. Mo trigger points are sore spots and muscles, but uh, fortunately for us, many motor points are acupuncture points on the face. So it makes it easy for us to uh, find them. So here's a, just a picture of bone and muscle. And on the face, the muscle is connected directly to our skin, which is why we can move the skin on our face. So again, if the muscle is pulled tight, then the skin will wrinkle. So when we're thinking of neuromuscular facial conditions, when uh, we're looking at the motor points, the face is innervated by two nerves, CN7, and um, also the trigeminal nerve. So when you're using uh, facial motor points, they are wonderful for any conditions involving paralysis. And what you do is you needle into the muscle, but not through the muscle. So on most of the face, you're going to go on an oblique angle about a quarter to a half an inch um, into the muscle. And facial motor points will treat the muscle and the fascia, and this can help to enhance the appearance of the skin, unless it's some sort of a skin disease, uh, discoloration, or a scarring. So when might you use motor points if you're doing cosmetic acupuncture? Well, as someone who practices cosmetic acupuncture extensively, I always start with 
basic cosmetic acupuncture treatments and if they my patient has a difficult to treat concern then I will use these motor points to help to enhance the effectiveness of my facial acupuncture treatment. So here is what a face looks like as it's aging. We have nasolabial folds, chin wrinkles, you can get um, loss of volume in the temples, we get lines between our eyebrows, um, the uh, face can hollow, the jaw contours change, and uh, we can get wrinkles in our chin and neck and also sagging underneath the neck. So here would be an example of someone who's not showing many signs of aging and then um, coming into their 50s, some signs of aging, and then more advanced signs of aging. So let's talk about some specific types of wrinkles that you might see in your treatment room and when using cosmetic acupuncture motor points might be beneficial. So one of those would be forehead wrinkles and frequently an individual will have forehead wrinkles because their frontalis muscle has become very tight and even when they feel like they're relaxing their forehead and they're not making an expression, the muscle itself is very tight and um, the folds in the skin remain there. So by relaxing the frontalis muscle, the entire forehead will relax and it will smooth out the wrinkles. Also, treating the frontalis can help to lift the lid, the um, eyebrows, and also the eyelid at the same time. This was a patient of mine who came to me and she was noticing her brows were starting to descend as she was getting older and so I treated just the left her left um, eyebrow and I used the frontalis muscle and you can see after one treatment when the muscle relaxed the skin laid flat and it pulled the uh, skin up into a more normal functioning for her. So here we have uh, the frontalis muscle and the motor point for the frontalis is uh, fortunately for us easy to find gallbladder 14. So if you wanted to work with the frontalis muscle uh, and the, again, the frontalis muscle wrinkles the forehead, it raises the eyebrows up, and uh, what you would do is you would put the, uh, the needle straight in on a very, very slight oblique angle, and uh, you're going to go into the muscle, but not through the muscle, depending on how thick their forehead skin is, would determine how deep you have to go before you hit the muscle. So here's a quick video. I had a patient who had had Bell's palsy and they could not raise their eyebrows and they could not uh, fully open their eye because of the Bell's palsy. So I had um, put this needle in and stimulated it and you can see the needle started moving immediately after the needle went in. And uh, I put the needle right in the motor point. It Another example of when you might use a facial motor point 
would be if someone had very stubborn lines between their eyebrows, either the two or the one, uh, we call them frown lines, and we would needle the corrugator muscle, and the motor point for that is just lateral to bladder two, and it's right in the corrugator muscle. The corrugator muscle pulls, along with the procerus, pulls the eyebrows together very strongly. And um, you would also, whoops, I have a little delay here. You would also needle the motor point for the procerus, which is yin tongue. And when you're using it as a motor point, you're going to needle it slightly towards the nose. Another area that motor points are very beneficial for is treating wrinkles in the chin. And as we age, these uh, chin wrinkles or chin dimples can be more noticeable because the mentalis muscle and the depressor anguli oris muscle, they can become, uh, they, they don't function as well. And so by doing the depressor labii inferioris and or the mentalis and or um, the depressor anguli oris, all of these muscles are going to work together to cause that issue. But uh, I'm showing you the uh, depress depressor labii inferioris, and the motor point for that is the extra point, one soon lateral to this um, extra point here. And the way you, uh, oh, I'll show you that in a second. Um, and then right medial to that is the mentalis. And the motor point for that is a half a soon lateral to REN24. So here is a video. And uh, this was a patient, another patient who had Bell's palsy. And um, I had put the needle in the mentalis. And as you can see, when I stimulated the needle, the muscle jumped and my patient reported back to me that uh, the issue that she had been having with like drooling when she was um, like brushing her teeth, she couldn't spit well, she couldn't drink through a straw, and she had had Bell's palsy many years prior, but still in this one side she had issues. Lip wrinkles can be treated very effectively with facial motor points. We would needle the uh, motor points around the abicularis oris, and there's two of them on each side of the mouth. One is uh, LI-19, and then the other one is between stomach four and REN-24. So it's like right here. Some other uses for facial motor points would be uh, points on some of the muscles pertaining to the levator muscles and uh, the orbicularis oculi. So the levator muscles in the face, on the cheeks, um, will, uh, if they're not functioning properly, along with some of the tendons and other things, but um, can contribute to the nasal labial folds, the motor point for the rosaurus, if you treat that, it can help with 
the little marionette lines. There are motor points for the neck that can help with the necklace lines and the neck bands. And then there are motor points around the eyes, which uh, I go over all of the motor points on the face in my classes, but um, there's uh, motor points around the orbicularis oculi that can help with crow's feet. In part two of this lecture, I will uh, go over facial motor point usage to treat neuromuscular facial conditions like Bell's palsy, Ramsey-Hunt syndrome, TMJ, uh, hemifacial spasm, and others. If you're interested in checking out my classes, you can go to facialacupuncture.classes.com, and my social is uh, for Instagram. It's Michelle Gellis, and Facebook. You can look up my Facebook group, which is facial acupuncture. Thank you so much.